Yes, we uh, should talk about different uh, types of, of databases. Um, uh, this can be a little bit different uh, and difficult. Um, okay, um, hierarchical databases. This, this goes back in history. Uh, and really the, uh, the structure of hierarchical databases comes from, uh, the days when you were storing everything on tape, before they actually had disks, and, be and certainly before they had, uh, large, um, uh, memory in computers. And, and so you were having to try and... Uh, say, do a search, uh, whatever uh, function you were performing through the database on a single pass through the tape. And uh, because of this, the, um, the structure, uh, the linkages between records um, tends to be in the form of a binary tree. Uh, and uh, this this allows you to sort of you know decide uh, very quickly uh, you know is this record appropriate or not uh, without necessarily having to read the entire record you can skip to the next record um, if it's not appropriate uh, if it is appropriate you read a little bit deeper anyways um, that uh, is a hierarchical database um, and and its structure for as I say, reasons of uh, historical technology and necessity involved in that. Now, uh, as uh, we started to get uh, larger computers where uh, more of the stuff uh, could be contained in memory, um, in order to facilitate uh, more different ways of searching for records, uh, they started to make network database management systems. Now, network in this case is not a network of computers and a network of machines. It's got nothing to do with cloud. Um, network database management systems are talking about the network of linkages between the different records of the database. So we've got... Um, records uh, uh, linked in multiple different ways. Um, so we have a, a network of linkages between the individual records in the database. Um, this is, you know, as I say, you know, expansion in terms of the uh, capabilities of computers, the, the memory uh, capability, um, and in some cases, the storage technologies. Uh, but the next leap is, is quite a leap, <coughs> and that is relational databases. Now, I, I believe I've mentioned uh, not every flat file database is a relational database. Everybody seems to think that every database is a relational database. Relational databases have so far affected our view of what a database is that it's it's hard to uh to discuss anything in in databases without using the terminology of the relational database and uh a relational database uh, may consist of one or more flat file tables. Um, they have uh, primary keys to index and uniquely identify the uh, uh, the material, the the, the records, um, and uh, uh, referential. Uh, sorry, foreign keys. Um, to uh, reference between records and, and to build uh, larger 
records, um, larger, uh, you know, full records where um, a uh, a reference uh, could be common to a, a number of, of records in the in the first uh, table. Um, so we can have multiple tables uh, joined by foreign keys. Um, and uh, this is all based on uh, the Clark-Wilson model, and, and there are a number of uh, aspects of that that go into security, and we'll, we'll discuss that more uh, a bit later. Um, but at the moment, uh, I just want to finish off with discussing the, uh, the object database. Um, object-oriented database, but database management systems. Now, um, same way as object-oriented programming that we've talked about before, um, we have objects, we have methods, um, we have messages, and so on and so forth. Uh, unfortunately, um, an awful lot of supposedly object-oriented database systems are in fact object relational database management systems where you have a relational database actually holding the data behind an object oriented front end um, uh, which is not quite the same thing when you have a, an object oriented database um, you've got to determine you know what's your object is the entire uh, database file your object um, is it uh, a field? Uh, is it a record? Um, is it a field within a record? So we have uh, decisions to make about the structure and, and what is an object. Uh, but we have the possibility an object can take, um, it can contain, of course, data um, which it's uh, dealing with and we can have the methods, and the methods, being functions, uh, could be things like um, the ability to query, the ability to display, the ability to print. Uh, you know, those can be methods. Now, because of that, we can uh, implement security into it and have the object itself determine, you know, should I display this information? Should I display this information to this user? And as long as we properly uh, instantiate the the original object and, and use inheritance to ensure that the uh, subsequent objects uh, contain those uh, security methods, then we have uh, the you know, a, a much greater chance of ensuring that yes, everything is secure here. We know what's going on. Um, we uh, have fewer concerns about uh, our uh, security if we have done it properly in the first place.